let us continue halogens in the halogens we will see preparation of cl2 preparation of cl2 we will see how to prepare cl chlorine that we will see chlorine preparation we will take manganese dioxide manganese dioxide that we will treat with hcl manganese dioxide we are treating with hcl what happens means this mn plus 4 this mn plus 4 is converting into mn plus 2 this cl minus 1 is converting into cl2 in the mno2 mn plus 4 is converting into mn plus 2 in the hcl cl minus 1 is converting into cl2 it, this oxidation number is what means zero so like this we can prepare this oxygen takes hydrogen and becomes water mn plus 2 takes cl minus and becomes mn cl2 okay so this mn2 plus takes cl minus and becomes mn cl2 cl2 is liberated hydrogen and oxygen becomes water so mno2 on reaction with hcl we are getting so and so so we will balance this one by keeping hcl4 and water 2 so next we will see we will take a chloride salt then we will add MnO2, then we will add corn sulfuric acid, corn sulfuric acid. This Mn, in MnO2, manganese is plus 4, that is becoming plus 2, Cl minus becoming Cl2. Cl minus becoming what in the sense? Cl2. Mn, this Mn plus 4 becomes Mn plus 2, Cl minus becomes Cl2, Cl2, okay. This Mn plus 2 takes a Cl minus and becomes MnCl2. I can say. This sulfuric acid being as bisulfate. Bisulfate. H plus takes oxide and becomes water. So Mn plus 2 takes Cl minus and becomes MnCl2. Bisulfate being as bisulfate in the bisulfate anion. Then H plus takes oxygen and becomes water. This Cl minus a Cl minus, we can write it as it is, MnO2, then sulfuric acid. Now, for balancing, we will take Cl minus 4 times, sulfuric acid 4 times, bisulfate 4 times, water 2 times. Next, method of preparation of Cl2, we will take potassium permanganate, we will take potassium permanganate, then we will add HCl. We will take potassium permanganate and we will add HCl. Here, manganese oxidation number is how much means plus 7. Plus 7 manganese in acidic medium becomes plus 2. Manganese plus 2. Manganese plus 7 becomes manganese plus 2. Then Cl minus becomes Cl2. Cl minus becomes Cl2. Mn plus 7 becomes Mn plus 2. Like this we can say. So, Potassium permanganate on treating with HCl, we are getting Cl2, we can say. This Mn plus 2 takes Cl minus and becomes Mn Cl2. Then this K plus takes Cl minus and becomes KCl. This oxygen and hydrogen becomes water. Now we will write this K mono 4 and HCl. So what is the reaction? We will see. K mono 4 we are taking 2 times, HCl 16 times. KCl two times, MnCl2 two times, water eight times, Cl2 five times. We have balanced the equation. Next, we'll take HCl gas and we'll pass air. We'll pass air. We'll keep catalyst CuCl2. CuCl2 catalyst will keep. Temperature will keep 723 Kelvin. Now what happens means HCl undergoes oxidation to gives what in the sense Cl2. Then water will get. Here Cl undergoes oxidation to give Cl2. Oxygen undergoes reduction to give water. Okay, let us balance 4 HCl, 2 Cl2, 2 water. This process is used for manufacturing Cl2. This process name is called Dickens process. This process name is called a Dickens process, you can say. Then we will see properties of Cl2. Cl2 color is a greenish yellow gas. This is pungent. It is suffocating water. 
it is soluble in water next chemical properties of cl2 we'll see calcium hydroxide calcium hydroxide reacts with the cl2 to give what in the sense of bleaching powder that bleaching powder contains what means cao cl twice cacl2 and water this is a bleaching powder we are getting this is what in the sense dry slaked lime we are taking dry slaked lime dry slaked lime we are passing cl2 gas over this we are getting what in the sense bleaching powder we are getting what is the formula of bleaching powder bleaching powder formula we will say cao cl2 will say this contains ca2 plus ions ocl minus ions and cl minus ions so in the bleaching powder what is there means calcium ion is there hypochlorite ion is there and the chloride ion is there chloride ion is there bleaching powder means now we will see here it is hypochlorite it is chloride it is what in the sense hypochlorite clo minus hypochlorite it is chloride cl minus is there said now what is the composition of bleaching powder bleaching powder contains what are the substances composition of bleaching powder is it contains hypochlorite anion hypochlorite is there then chloride is there cl minus is there here hypochlorite is there Unre unreacted dry slaked lime is present unreacted dry slaked lime is present dot to h2 this is called a bleaching powder bleaching powder contains these are the substances then cl2 act as oxidizing agent what is the chemical reaction regarding it that we will see ferrous with the cl2 ferrous is converting into ferric cl2 is converting into cl minus ferrous is converting into ferric cl2 is converting into cl minus then sulfite with the chlorine sulfite is converting into sulfate cl2 is converting into cl minus then sulfur dioxide sulfur dioxide with the cl2 sulfur dioxide is converting into sulfate cl2 is converting into cl minus then iodine with the cl2 iodine is converting into iodic iodate cl2 is converting into cl minus here we, water is required otherwise oxygen will not come iodine is converting into iodate cl2 is converting into cl minus these are the oxidizing nature of cl2 oxidizing reactions of cl2 ferrous converting into ferric sulfite converting into sulfate sulfur dioxide into sulfate iodine into iodate while cl2 converts into cl minus okay so now we will write in a ferrous we will take in the form of ferrous sulfate cl2 we will take ferrous sulfate ferrous becoming ferric ferric in the sense ferric sulfate fe2so4 thrice ferric sulfate cl minus we can write it as hcl cl minus we are writing as what in the sense hcl we can write how we got h plus in the sense this reaction is possible in acidic medium this reaction is possible in acidic medium therefore we have written we have written h plus that means uh, for ferrous we are taking ferrous sulfate chlorine we are passing for acidic we are taking sulfuric acid so ferrous sulfate is becoming ferric sulfate cl2 becomes cl minus cl minus takes h plus and becomes hcl so this is the chemical reaction now we will balance this one fe ferrous sulfate we will take two times hcl two times we will write okay next we will see this reaction we want sulfite we will take sulfite in the form of what in the sense sodium sulfite na2so3 plus cl2 we are getting sulfate sulfate means na2so4 sodium sulfate cl minus we will write it as hcl okay here oxygen is 4 oxygen is 3 to balance oxygen we are writing water molecule now hydrogen hcl is two times like this we have balanced okay then 
in this case we will see sulfur dioxide case we will see here we will see that uh, oxygen is four times oxygen is two times therefore we will write two water molecules we will write here then cl2 we will balance cl2 we have balanced next uh, hydrogen we have to balance four hydrogens therefore four h plus we will write here so now we will write this one like this so to cl2 two water molecules sulfate and h plus we can write it as sulfuric acid and cl minus and h plus we can write it as hcl okay this equation we'll see here iodine with the chlorine gives iodate now we'll balance three i oxygen therefore three water molecules then cl my i my iodine is two times okay oxygen is six times okay cl2 chlorine is two times okay now hydrogen is uh, six times therefore six h plus so we can write this as i2 plus cl2 plus six water gives two times hio3 two times hio3 two times hcl then two times hcl now how many h plus remaining you see here then uh, we are balancing this equation by keeping a uh, cl2 as five times therefore 10 times hcl 10 times hcl five times cl2 we are taking five times cl2 going for reaction means one time i2 is going for reaction okay next uh, cl2 act as bleaching agent that reaction we'll see cl2 act as bleaching agent how that we'll see chlorine takes moisture and gives hcl and hcl hypochlorous acid hypochlorous acid is unstable therefore that decomposes to give hydrochloric acid and nascent oxygen this nascent oxygen removes unwanted color unwanted color becomes unwanted color becomes colorless unwanted color with nascent oxygen gives colorless so unwanted color is removed therefore this process is called bleaching so bleaching is done by what in the sense chlorine so cl2 chlorine is acting as a bleaching agent this bleaching process is done by oxidation therefore it is permanent it is permanent we can say because it is oxidation therefore it is oxidized species it will not undergo uh, any reaction with atmospheric air it will not convert back to this one unwanted color by atmospheric air therefore this process is a permanent we can say next we will go for hydrogen chloride preparation of hydrogen chloride we will see preparation of hydrogen chloride now we will take sodium chloride to the sodium chloride we will write we will add corn sulfuric acid corn sulfuric acid we will keep the temperature 420 kelvin so what we are getting means uh, this from this h plus from this cl minus gives hcl then we are getting nahso4 sodium bisulfate we are getting then we will take sodium chloride then we will take sodium bisulfite sodium bisulfate nahso4 we will keep temperature 823 kelvin so what happens means we will get hcl and na2so4 we will get this h and cl becomes hcl then na2so4 we are getting so hcl we can prepare by uh, treating sodium chloride with a concentrated sulfuric acid so can we prepare hbr by this method by taking nabr no by taking sodium bromide we cannot get hbr because hbr will undergo oxidation with corn sulfuric acid and gives br2 similarly sodium iodide gives iodine with corn sulfuric acid sodium chloride gives hcl with corn sulfuric acid similarly sodium fluoride gives hf with corn sulfuric acid then hcl is colorless hcl is pungent hcl is pungent hcl existing as gas under normal condition then this hcl 
we can use for we can use this hcl for which case in the sense for salt analysis in the salt analysis hcl is used where in the sense for finding anions as well as for finding cation for finding which anions in the sense for finding carbonate because carbonate with a dilute hcl or concentrated hcl gives what in the sense carbon dioxide gas sulfite with a dilute hcl gives what in the sense sulfur dioxide gas sulfite with a dilute hcl gives sulfur dioxide gas carbonate with a dilute hcl gives carbon dioxide gas then bicarbonate with a dilute hcl bicarbonate with a dilute hcl gives carbon dioxide gas so carbonate bicarbonate gives carbon dioxide with a dilute hcl even corn hcl dilute sulfuric acid we can say sulfite with a dilute hcl gives sulfur dioxide gas we can say then this dilute hcl we are using in the salt analysis for cationic analysis to for the group separation of cations we can use a dilute hcl test first group cations will precipitate with the dilute hcl which are first group cations pb2 plus mercurous ion hg2 2 plus then ag plus first group cations they will be precipitated so and another thing in the anionic analysis dilute acid test which and all responding for dilute acid one is carbonate becomes carbon dioxide next bicarbonate becomes carbon dioxide next sulfite becomes sulfur dioxide next sulfide becomes hydrogen sulfide then nitrite becomes gives nitric oxide okay next dilute hcl for the reaction we'll see now we'll take the metal fe the metal fe and hcl we will take this fe ion reacts with hcl to give what in the sense ferrous chloride ion reacts with hcl to give ferrous chloride then what is obtained means hydrogen gas is obtained F e undergoes oxidation. H plus undergoes reduction. Then, in this case, can we get ferric? Can we get a ferric? We got what in the sense ferrous. We got iron is converting into ferrous, but not ferric. With H C L. why iron is converting into ferrous with hcl but not ferric because this ferric reacts with this hydrogen reacts with hydrogen and becomes what in the sense ferrous therefore we are not getting ferric we are getting ferrous so iron reacts with ferrous but not ferric why because ferric is converting back into ferrous with the hydrogen gas therefore so that iron with hcl we can get ferrous and hydrogen gas and we can say then now we will take anhydrous hcl and aqueous hcl anhydrous hcl is bad conductor because anhydrous hcl contains ionic nature 17% covalent nature rest so anhydrous hcl is bad conductor whereas aqueous hcl aqueous hcl is good conductor why because aqueous hcl solution contains h plus ions and cl minus ions therefore they are carrying current so aqueous hcl is good conductor whereas anhydrous hcl is bad conductor H plus aqueous, we can write it as H three O plus aqueous. Hydronium ion H three O plus aqueous, we can write. So aqueous HCl contains H plus aqueous and Cl minus aqueous. They carry current. 
therefore aqueous hcl is a good conductor we can say anhydrous hcl is a bad conductor we can say then uses of hcl we can say. uses of hcl hcl is used for manufacturing cl2 manufacturing ammonium chloride then bonds from bonds glue will be extracted using hcl from bonds glue will be extracted using hcl then bone black bone black will be purified using hcl bone black will be purified using hcl then hcl is used in medicine hcl is used as laboratory reagent laboratory reagent we can say next we will go for a oxy acids of halogen oxy acids of halogen will take fluorine forms hof oxy hypochlorous acid chlorine forms hypochlorous acid bromine forms hypobromous acid iodine forms hypoiodous acid chlorine forms chlorous acid hclo2 chlorous acid formula is what means hclo2 then chlorine forms chloric acid hclo3 bromine forms bromic acid hbro3 iodine forms iodic acid hio3 then chlorine forms perchloric acid hclo4 bromine forms perbromic acid hbro4 iodine forms peroiodic acid hio4 okay rest of the things are not formed rest of the things are not formed okay that means in the chlorine case everything is possible bromine case bromous acid not possible iodine case iodous acid not possible fluorine case hypofluorous acid alone possible okay we will see the acidic strength we will see how the acidic strength is that that we will see in the acidic strength case here cl is plus 1 here cl is plus 3 here cl is plus 5 here cl is plus 7 if we go down the group oxidation state or oxidation number increases if we go down the group oxidation number increases therefore what happens to acidic strength acidic strength increases why why acidic strength increases on increasing oxidation number of central atom that we will see now we will take hclo4 HClO4 we are writing like this. It is oxy acid. Oxy acid means OH group will be there. Now this group uh, re releases H plus. So we are getting ClO4 minus. ClO4 minus. We are getting perchlorate. Perchlorate ion we are getting. This perchlorate ion can go for resonance. How many resonance structures possible in the sense? Four resonance structures possible. It is second resonance structure next resonance structure next resonance structure is this one next resonance structure we will write next resonance structure is this one four resonance structures we have written for perchlorate ion then we will say this oxygen shows minus i effect so bonding electron cloud migrates like this oxygen shows minus i effect this oxygen shows minus effect therefore h plus is relieved sir now we will take chloric acid will take hclo4 hclo3 will take chloric acid hclo3 will take now it is giving h plus then what is obtained in the sense what is obtained in the sense so and so is obtained chlorate this chloric acid gives h plus and we are getting chlorate anion now we can say it is showing minus i effect bonding electron cloud moving towards oxygen it shows minus i effect therefore this bonding electron cloud moves towards cl this bonding electron cloud moves towards oxygen h plus is relieved this chlorate goes for resonance here how many resonance structures in the sense 
three resonance structures are possible for chlorite three resonance structures are possible for chlorite whereas sir for chlorite for chlorite four resonance structures chlorite three resonance structures more number of resonance structures here therefore more stable therefore forward is highly favorable therefore this acidic nature is more so here acidic nature is more when compared to this therefore we can say as oxidation number increases acidic nature increases we can say sir now we will see in this case that means uh, uh, hof hocl hobr hoi how the acidic strength will be there that we will see how the acidic strength is there means hof greater than hocl greater than hobr greater than hoi what is the reason because now we will take hof we will take we are taking hof hof so fluorine is more electronegative therefore we are getting h plus here and fo minus then we will take hocl here what happens in clo minus hypochlorite and h plus we are getting sir now it this electronegativity is 4 this electronegativity is 3 therefore it is pulling this bond pair to more extent when compared to this therefore this bond pair is easily shifting when compared to this therefore its h plus donation tendency is more when compared to this so that it is having higher acidic nature when compared to this so using electronegativity we have explained here sir now we will see oxidizing strength how the oxidizing strength is there that we will see oxidizing strength hclo is unstable therefore it decomposes to give hcl and nascent oxygen next hclo2 will take hclo2 hclo2 here cl is plus 3 here cl is plus 1 so oxidizing in the sense it is undergoing reduction now see H hclo is unstable it is decomposing easily to give nascent oxygen that means it gives nascent oxygen means it makes another substance to undergo oxidation easily therefore oxidizing strength is more for this when compared to this one so hclo oxidizing strength is more than hclo2 which is more than hclo3 which is more than hclo4 so oxidizing strength will be there like this now we will take hclo4 hbro4 hio4 we will take how the oxidizing strength will be there here that we will see oxidizing strength will be high for hclo4 than hbro4 which is greater than hio4 so oxidizing strength is like this is there here why cl is more oxidizing nature than br because electronegativity of cl is more than br therefore next step. clo minus undergoes disproportionation because oxidation number is plus 1 this on disproportionation gives what this on disproportionation gives cl minus and clo3 minus in the presence of a hot condition and a concentrated base in the presence of concentrated base in the presence of concentrated base and a hot condition clo minus undergoes disproportionation this plus 1 cl converting into minus 1 cl as well as plus 5 cl so clo minus hypochlorite undergoes disproportionation we can say hypochlorite ion undergoes disproportionation in the presence of basic medium under hot condition okay this rate of this disproportionation reaction how it is there that means hypochlorite is greater than hypochlorite value is less than hypobromite which is less than hypoiodite hypochlorite is less than hypobromite which is less than hypoiodite it is a rate of disproportionation 
So, disproportionation tendency is less for CL when compared to BR in this case. So, let us remember that uh, tendency of disproportionation less for hypochlorite than BRO minus less than IO minus. Hypochlorite, uh, this uh, hypohalate tendency of disproportionation like this is there. Next, we may ask a question that why hypochlorite goes for disproportionation less tendency? That means down the group, electronegativity decreases. Therefore, down elements can undergo, can convert into higher oxidation state easily. Therefore, down the group, disproportionation tendency increases. Next, we will go for interhalogen compounds. Interhalogen compounds means in those compounds, only halogens will be there. Different halogens will be there. So, what are the possible interhalogen compounds that we will see? One is X, X dash. Both are halogens. Next one is X, X dash 3. Next one is X, X dash 5 times. Next one is X, X dash 7 times. Interhalogen compounds like this. Here, X is larger size. This X is a larger size. This X dash is a smaller size. X dash is a smaller size, we can say. X is a larger size, X dash is a smaller size, like this. Now we will see some methods of preparation. We will take Cl2 and F2, equal volumes we will take. Cl2 and F2 are taken in equal volumes, taken to temperature 437 Kelvin. What we are getting means ClF. CLF. In this ClF, this chlorine oxidation number is plus one, fluorine oxidation number is minus one. Then Cl2 with the fluorine. Fluorine we will take excess. Fluorine we will take excess. Temperature provided is 573 Kelvin. What we are getting means ClF3 we are getting. ClF3. Next step, we'll take Bromine, Br2, and fluorine. Bromine and fluorine on reaction gives BrF3 for balancing Br3, Br2. So cross multiply, bromine is 2. Next, bromine with F2 excess. F2 excess. What we are getting in the sense BrF5. BrF5. Okay. So fluorine 2, fluorine 5. Difference is odd number, so cross multiply. Sorry. Next step, we will take interallergen compound we have taken. ICL is interallergen compound because it contains two different halogens, so interallergen compound. This we will treat with the Cl2 at 100 degrees Celsius. What we are getting in the sense, we are getting ICL3. It is lower inter interhalogen compound, it is higher interallergen compound. It is lower interhalogen compound. It is higher interhalogen compound. Sorry. So we have converted lower interhalogen compound into higher interhalogen compound. Okay. This uh, interhalogen compounds are covalent molecules. Interhalogen compounds are covalent molecules. These are diamagnetic. Because unpaired electrons will not be there. Sorry. How the bond dissociation enthalpies will be there? That we will see. Now we will take Cl2 we will take. For Cl2, bond dissociation enthalpy is 242.6 kilojoule per mole. For interallergen compound Cli, 
the bond dissociation enthalpy is 209 kJ per mole for i2 bond dissociation enthalpy is 151.1 kJ per mole so inter allergen compound bond dissociation energy is less than more electron its more electronegative atom and greater than its less electronegative atom okay then we'll see hydrolysis of inter allergen compounds hydrolysis we'll see now we will take inter allergen compound of the type x x dash it is undergoing hydrolysis to give what we'll see here this x is having plus one oxidation number x minus is having minus one oxidation number so x dash takes h plus and becomes hx this this one takes oh minus and becomes hox hypohalous acid so here halogen is having plus one oxidation number it gives hypohalous acid next we will take x x dash 3 now this oxidation number plus 3 this oxidation number minus 1 plus water gives x dash takes h plus and becomes hx dash this x plus 3 takes oh minus and becomes hox2 hox2 we can say halous acid it this we can say that uh, halous acid sorry halous acid formula is what in the sense uh, x is one time hxo2 hxo2 halous acid we can say then x x dash pi here this is plus pi this is minus 1 this on hydrolysis gives this x dash takes h plus from water and gives h x dash this x phi plus takes oh minus and becomes hx o3 halic acid halic acid then we'll see x x dash 7 now this x oxidation number is plus 7 x dash is minus 1 this this x dash takes h plus from water and becomes hx dash this x takes oh minus from water and gives hx o4 hx o4 per allic acid so that plus 1 oxidation number means hypohalous acid plus 3 oxidation number means allous acid plus 5 oxidation number means allic acid plus 7 oxidation number means per halic acid like that we can say then shapes of this we'll say this is a diatomic linear in this one this is bent t shape clf3 example it is square pyramid brfi is example it is pentagonal bipyramid if7 is example pentagonal bipyramid so what is the use inter allergen compounds are used as non aqueous solvents inter allergen compounds are used as non aqueous solvents then it is used as fluorinating agent how it is used as fluorinating agent that we will see now we will take uranium it is treated with clf3 clf3 we are getting uf6 and clf now we will balance this one. we will balance this one Now, in this reaction, uranium is converted into UF6. Uranium is going for fluorination. So, ClF3 is fluorinating agent, we can say. What is the use of this? Naturally available uranium contains 235 and 238. 235 is required for This 235 uranium is required in atomic power station for nuclear fission. So we want uranium 235, but naturally available uranium contains smaller percentage of 235 and larger percentage of 238. So we will make the naturally available uranium to go for fluorination. So you are getting UF6. You are getting UF6. It will diffuse faster, it will diffuse slower. Therefore, 
we can enrich uranium 235 okay it is moving faster therefore we can separate uranium 235 from this 